Shannon and today I'm going to share with you my favorite day trips from Berlin, Germany. Before you set out for any of these locations, I do recommend that you check what type of public transportation ticket you'll need. For example, some of these are located in the C zone of Berlin, which is the area furthest from the center, and this ticket is a little bit more expensive than the typical A and B ticket. The first location is Museums Dorf Dupel, a reconstructed village that imitates what life was like in Germany during the 13th century. This open air museum is about an hour from Berlin and only costs three euros and 50 cents to get in as an adult. They're open Saturdays, Sundays, and public holidays from March to November, so I definitely recommend checking their website before you go just to make sure they're open. And by the way, Dorf in German means village, so the translation is Museums Dorf, Museum Village. They call it a living museum because on certain days people will be dressed up in the traditional garb that they might have worn during medieval times and you'll be able to walk around freely throughout the village. If you come hungry, they do have a concession stand full of food and drinks that you can buy on site. My favorite part was all of the farm animals. There were ginormous pigs, huge woolly goats, cows, chickens, and more. It's worth coming here just for the sheep alone. He's the black sheep of the family. <laughs> No! Ah. Oh my god, no way! Is that you? Spreewald is a region full of waterways and canals and located about an hour southeast of Berlin. Spreewald literally translates to Spree Forest. Spree is the name of the river and Wald means forest. You have to do a boat tour when you're there. It costs about 15 to 20 euros per person and our trip was only an hour but I know they have longer trips as well. Along the way the boat will stop at this little old lady's house and she'll come outside and serve you pickles from her back dock. To be honest the pickles were not spectacular, but I guess I'm happy that I could support this lady in her random little business. We are at a pit stop on our boat and we just ordered some pickles from the pickle lady. <laughs> You can buy alcohol on the boat from the guy who's actually rowing, or you can bring your own. And if you love camping, shopping, boats, goodness what else, bike riding, you're gonna want to spend at least two days in Spreewald. Next is the Berlin Olympic Stadium that was built for the 1936 Summer Olympic Games. The creepy part about this stadium is that Hitler was actually in power during the time this was built. The Olympic Stadium survived the World Wars and only has a few gunshots on the side of it and there is a damaged bell from the bell tower. It costs eight euro to do a stadium tour and we're trying to save some money so we're not going in there. If you don't want to spend money, you can still walk the perimeter of Olympic Park and they have a history trail with a lot of signs that are translated in both German and English. After you're done exploring the Olympic Stadium, I recommend visiting the Equestrian Stadium. I couldn't really dig up any historical information about this riding stadium, but I do know today it's used for local riding clubs and you can catch a glimpse of locals riding Die Ferde, the horses, in the park. Behind me is the Rider Stadium and my favorite part are these really old chairs that I wouldn't want to sit in but I'm sure there's been a lot of booties in them. <laughs> The Spandau Citadel is an hour west of Alexanderplatz and open seven days a week. The Citadel is a fortress that was built to protect Berlin in the late 1500s. Let's go in, I'm so excited! As an adult, it only costs four euro and fifty cents to get in. As soon as you enter, you'll be guided upstairs to a museum which explains the historical significance of the fortress. From there, you're allowed to wander around the fortress walls and explore all of the inner courtyards. For a great view, walk up 153 steps to Julius Tower the oldest building in Berlin that was built at the beginning of the 13th century to help defend the castle. And for those of you crazy folks who love watching airplanes, you can see one of the landing paths to Tegel Airport right across the fortress. The Citadel also has great exhibitions and art galleries inside. For example, the Unveiled exhibition is permanent that includes a lot of political monuments and statues that were once displayed all over Berlin. Hey, hey you. The face. These kids are crazy up in here. Where are their parents? Parade Hall also has an exhibition of cannons and guns. And don't worry about having to know German because most of the text to describe these items are also translated into English. 
Sachsenhausen is a former concentration camp that's about an hour from Berlin. Because of how sad and graphic it was, I chose not to record a video while I was there, but I did snap a few photos. This camp was once a former factory that was bought out and then used to imprison over 200,000 people. There are guided tours and audio tours available, but I chose to walk around by myself. One of the weirdest parts to me was the fact that everyday people like you and I live next door to this camp. I'm sure the rent is really cheap to have a house next to it, but who would want to live there? Potsdam is the capital of the state of Brandenburg and only a 45 minute train ride from the center of Berlin. This city is quite large so there are bus tours available if you don't want to walk, but if you do it's about 20 minutes to walk to the palaces and royal parks. Potsdam is pretty much the complete opposite of Berlin. And by that, I mean it's a bit more polished and it feels like you're walking back in time. I found my mansion. Right behind me is the Belvedere. And it was about a 30 minute walk from the Schloss. And my goodness, just look up. The palace grounds are open year round, but I definitely recommend going during the summertime. In the winter time, you'll probably freeze your batuti off. It's a lot of walking and you're outside for the entire day. How creepy are these heads behind me? Also, my face is going numb, so I kind of feel like these folks up there. All right, now off to the main town of Potsdam because I'm gold. However, the flip side of visiting during the winter is that nobody is there. You'll have the palace grounds all to yourself. I am standing in front of the Rock Gate in Potsdam. Teufelsburg is located about an hour west of Berlin. The US National Security Agency, the NSA, built these towers on top of a hill made of war rubble from over 400,000 buildings. So they say anyway. It's open from Wednesday to Sunday and costs about 5 euros to get in without a guided tour. After the Second World War ended, unfortunately not a lot of men were alive anymore, so women had to help clean up and rebuild the city of Berlin. Inside Teufelsburg, there's a mini photo gallery that commemorates the women who helped clean up all of the rubble. And today that rubble is now covered up with lush green grass and Teufelsberg is nicknamed Devil's Mountain. Besides the spy towers, what makes Teufelsberg unique is the incredible street art. Select artists are invited in to spray paint and set up unique installations. Your eyes seriously won't know where to look first because every wall is covered up with so many colors. Keep in mind there isn't an elevator to get to the top of Teufelsberg. There are a lot of steps and it's pretty dark. However, once you reach the top, it opens up into this giant room and you can hear everyone's voices echoing across the walls. To get down, you have to use your flashlight. Oh my gosh, it's creepy. If you're looking for some really good family fun, go to the fairgrounds. The fairgrounds is located about 30 minutes northwest of Alexanderplatz in Kurt Schumacher Dam. There are three major festivals throughout the year. The first is Frühlingsfest, which is the spring festival that occurs during late March and April. The second is Volksfest, which is in the summertime. And last but not least, Oktoberfest from September to October. It is free to get into the fairgrounds, but bring cash for the rides and also to eat some tasty German treats. I just rode this roller coaster, which was only four euro. I think it's a good deal. <laughs> there are some good screams in there. And finally, check out one of the relaxing lakes in Berlin. For example, Lake Bonzi is only 45 minutes from Berlin and is separated into a larger lake and a smaller lake. The Berlin lakes are really easy to get to by public transportation. They're just a short walk from the train station and they're a nice location to go for a boat ride, relax in the sun, have a picnic, or ride your bike around. Behind us is Lake Bonzi, a very popular place to relax in the summer. That wraps up my favorite day trips from Berlin. Of course, there are so many more places I wanted to go, but didn't have enough time or money, honestly, to explore. Before you guys go, please click subscribe right here, and I will see you next time. Teufelsberg. Spreewald. P.S. This is how I prepare what I'm going to say to y'all. I'm currently looking up where the heck the festival ground is. All of the palaces and parks in Potsdam are pretty spread out. That was really hard to say, by the way. Oh my gosh. <laughs>